We're going around Cape Hatteras, which is one of the most notorious, craziest spots in the world. You guys, we are so excited. This is actually going to be the biggest sale we've had together as a family. By a mile, we've waited probably an extra 10 days to get the right forecast, and it's a little too good at the minute. No oh, wind. it is beautiful. Blue skies. This morning we woke up, we packed up the house, we just spent two weeks in the heart of Charleston at our friend's house. Casa de Magdalena. But it's so nice to be back on the boat, to have unpacked our bags, kind of. The saloon's still a bit of a mess. But it feels good. We're inspired again, ready for a new adventure. The boats look a pretty schmicko. There you go, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you have been an emotional wreck today. What's going on? Just lots of work. And it's really hard to do it all. We've had the we had the two courses, the kids are going crazy. There's a Svalbard trip. Yeah. An Annapolis boat show. A, a trip to Vietnam, business. a charter business, a swimwear line. Lots of things. Two things we can't talk about. Two very exciting things. Three. Three very exciting things. It's all exciting but it's a bit much and probably once every two weeks. I'm like, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it all. And then? And then two days later when I've caught up, I'm like, this is the best thing ever. No, no, no. What? You, you get grumpy. I get stressed. Yeah, and then you, what happens? I get emotional. And you start having to go at me for no reason. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> don't use this video as some kind of... <laughs> Thing for your personal. Oh my god, come on. What happened this morning? And then, and I was just, just upset. Three seconds ago. I was upset. Yeah, so what happened? You were being unhelpful. <laughs> you okay. need to be helpful when I'm emotional and sad, and you weren't. We had such a nice time in this house. I'm gonna miss it. Hey, Ellie last night was like, Oh, this place really felt feels like home. We've been here for probably two and a half weeks. Mm. And um, yeah, I felt a little bit melancholy packing it up. What is it? Okay, everything looks good. Nothing left behind. I'm just getting this on, and then I'm going to pull that around. Okay, all aboard. We got new chart plotters. Yeah, we got new chart plotters. Did you put the charts in there? <laughs> Funny mistake, he's done a great job, but he forgot to put the Navionics card into the actual stuff so we've got a base map and nothing else which was a little concerning first thing in the morning but we know what the problem is we're going to rectify the situation and we're going around cape hatteras which is one of the most notorious craziest fucking spots in the world carpe hatteras has been known as a hazard since the middle of the 16th century it juts like an elbow out into the atlantic and two major ocean currents with very different characteristics converge off of the Cape. Infamous for its shifting shoals and shallows, low-lying, hard-to-spot barrier islands, pop-up thunderstorms and geographically induced weather anomalies, and you can see why we're planning this voyage so carefully. Dudes from the Volvo Ocean Race went around the world through the Southern Ocean racing hardcore and they said that Hatteras was the worst weather and the worst conditions that they encountered in the whole place. It's very, very notorious, the, the water and the weather's there. So Elena's... Under. We got good weather. We're going to be fine. You got it, amigo? Hey. All good. <laughs> that tiny thing? There's two of shoot. them in there, so... Yeah, pop them in the unit down below. And we've got 
got Alex on board. Hey. What brings you to La Vagabond? Um, we are sailing up to Annapolis and then I've got about two months worth of work to uh, get the boat ready for charter. And people have met you before on the recent crossing up, hey? Uh, I think so. We haven't done like a Did you intro. get much screen time? Oh, uh, we did talk about thunderstorms. Okay. Yeah, Im impending doom of thunderstorms. But... And it's Mrs. Ellie. Hello. How are you? Good, yeah. How was your time in the house? It was nice. It was relaxing. Mm. The kids could just run around and I could keep my eyes off them for more than five minutes. Yeah. So it was good, but I'm happy to be back on the boat. Elena, I feel like I've gotten soft having hung around in a house for a while. Yeah? Yeah, it's, a, it's really hot on board. I've been used to the, I've just been sitting in aircon, yeah. watching Netflix. Fair enough. I've been getting fat, <laughs> drinking beer and getting Uber Eats. It's been amazing. Really looking forward to getting out on the ocean. So what do we got here, Alex? We've got hot land and then the hot Gulf Stream. So we've got thunderstorms building on both sides, um, but we're sort of threading the needle in between the two at the moment. Hopefully the two on either side of us don't get so big that they meet in the middle. Fingers crossed. Be up soon, bud. Just looking in the grab bag because a concern of mine for this trip is that we don't have a life raft because we used it for the safety training, which is ironic. <laughs> so I'm just looking at the grab bag. We're going to use the dinghy as a life raft if we needed to. So what would you say to the people that would say you should never ever leave without a life raft? Your dinghy is a great life raft. And if you want to be a sailor, you got to leave port. And we would have had to wait an extra two weeks to get our life raft. So as much as I don't like doing this, you just gotta look at the fact. I don't wanna jinx us, so I don't wanna talk anymore. We've also altered our course. So normally you go out into the Gulf Stream, but we're gonna be quite close to land. There's some other precautions that we've taken as well. If something were to go wrong, to tip things in our favor. Oh, I know how much you wanna play with this. No, Do you wanna play like, with that, Lenny? You have to blow through it as hard as you can. Harder. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> I'm just gonna go to bed for a bit. It's so relaxing right now. Right. And here's the sleep. I'm gonna go try and sleep for a bit. Do it. I'll look after Lenny. This is the most relaxed I've been in a while. Yeah? So nice. Lenny, you're with me, bud. No. <laughs> Come on. Hey, can you, can you grab the binoculars? Alex said he saw a whale before. Should we go and have a look for a whale? I see one pirate ship with pirate ship. I'm not gonna see the ship away. Are you guarding the door? Am I allowed to come inside? Uh, no, because I'm doing some work. You're doing some work? <laughs> did you have a sleep, Ellie? I did, yeah. Yeah? Right. Yeah. Because I'm working. You're working? Yeah. He's saying I'm not allowed in here because he's oh. working. <laughs> Am I allowed in, Lenny? <laughs> We'll have to keep it down. Sorry about that, hey? I am showered and fresh. We're about to put the code D out. Riley's going to tell you about the wind. Hey, babe, tell us about the wind and why we're putting up the code D. That's gone behind us, which was... We, did you hear the thunder? No. Nah. Yeah, there's thunder and a bit of lightning, but that's gone behind us now, so I'm happy to put up the big kit. Uh, we've got 11 knots from about here, so once we put this up, we should be flying. It's probably, it feels like 10 now. Yeah. Yeah. So 
this is a 400 nautical mile passage, which is the furthest Baby Darwin has been, and all of us together. So when Lenny was one, his longest passage was actually a 10 day trip and then a 19 day trip. He's got a little bit more experience than Darwin did at his age, but that's okay. We've been taking it slowly this year well, since baby Darwin was around. And now it's time to take on some more serious sails with him. This is a bit of a celebration, this sail. We're playing this sleeping monster game. Going nine knots right now. This is so much fun. Tell me about the conditions right now. So it's picked up to 14 from 120 degrees, which is absolutely perfect. So we're glad that the weather came as it should have. We're doing between nine and 10 knots now, which is great. The Gulf Stream's out there, which we're not gonna go to because there's a wall of thunderstorms that are all appearing on the Gulf Stream. If they dissipate in the morning, we'll go there and get a three knot boost. But if not, we'll just continue along as we are here. And then there's a, what's it called? It's not Moorhead City, is it? It's a 10 mile detour. Well, it's 20 because it's 10 there and 10 back. But if the wind picks up and the kids are tired and it gets a little bit annoying for everyone, tomorrow, then we can tuck in here, this beautiful little anchorage. Yeah, it's just comfort and just depends on how the crew feels as to how far we keep going. The ultimate goal is Annapolis, which is 500 miles away from when we left. Just a bit of housekeeping. If you're a young cruiser, which can really be any age because you're as young as you feel, right? Don't forget to sign up to the Young Cruisers Association. Share your story and connect with other young people getting out there over at youngcruisers.org. It's free and having become a member and flying our bogey in anchorages has already brought us a lot of good, like-minded friends and fun. While you're there, visit the awards tab to nominate yourself or another inspirational cruiser for the International Cruisers Awards. The awards will be given out at our upcoming event at the Annapolis Boat Show in collaboration with the YCA. We'll be hosting this event and giving a whole bunch of you recognition for your hard work, whether you're on social media or not, and it's going to be a blast. Voting will finish up on the 6th of October. I'll pop the link in the description below. See you guys soon. It's been pretty funny trying to entertain the two kids in this small space. You wouldn't believe me if I told you how many times we clean this area, sweep the floor, pick up the toys, try and put away as much as we can. It all just comes straight back out. So they've been playing with uh, Lego blocks. Lenny's been playing an educational game on his iPad and now he's actually watching Octonauts because it's the afternoon. We allow him that. Darwin wants to watch but he can't. <laughs> he just pushes the button. He just pushes the button. Oh, what happened? Happen. Okay? How have the kids been going, Ellie? <laughs> a bit sweaty. <laughs> no, they've been fine, to be fair. Darwin's been a little bit grumpy the last half hour, but all day it's been, it's been quite easy. <laughs> Are you being cheeky? Oh my god. <laughs> I do not trust that at all. I mean, it's brilliant, but I'm a bit scared. Wow. Here is a shock absorption uh, <laughs> device. <laughs> and what it does is it absorbs the shock from this here rope. Then it's slapping around, making all sorts of ruckus. So we rigged up this thing, and it's much quieter, much better. It's good. <laughs> it's so good. He was just crying and we're, I don't know, he's just been a bit upset for no reason and when he eats he'll get frustrated and I, I just seen him when he put his head back to cry like, ah, he's got some new teeth coming. So we got like eight 
a long time ago. Now I think finally he's getting the other ones. And we've calmed him down with some chocolate. chocolate. Oh, is that yum? <laughs> sleeping in Ellie's bed tonight. She's just taken him, read a story. I hope he's asleep for her now. But this is for the first night they've slept together in the same bed. He seemed pretty comfortable with it. He loves Ellie, so that's a relief. We just don't want him sleeping up here in the saloon when the door's wide open and we're sailing. And if someone's out at the helm and Lenny wakes up, no one would know and maybe he could go outside just to see where Dada is or anyone. So it's safer for him to be in a bedroom. So he's in Ellie's cabin because I'm in our cabin with Darwin. So I'm just about to jump into bed. And Riley's on watch until midnight. And then Alex is gonna take over. They're just gonna tag team until sunrise. And then I will jump on shift at sunrise with Darwin once he's awake. So yeah, that's the plan for the night. Still got the code D out. Have seen lightning on the horizon. So I'm gonna ask, Riley, what do you think about that? What's going on? What's the lightning look like? There's there's a bit over here that I'm looking at, but that's that's the only bit that's all around us, which is so good. Um, but yeah, I'm just keeping an eye on that, and that just happens to be right where the wind's coming from. But I think that it would come behind us. So you, are you and Alex gonna hot bunk in the saloon? No, he's got a room and I've slept in the saloon. Oh yeah, okay, that's nice. Yeah. About two hours ago we jived. Alex woke me up right in the middle of when I was sleeping, which was very good. <laughs> we're headed into a thunderstorm. He's like, hey dude, we're gonna jive, so we jived. Because we were getting close to one, but also there was clear sky one way and horrible looking sky with lightning and thunder and all sorts of shit in the other and so we just turn and so we're going this way now all behind us is just lit up it's it's just nuts and alex got a message from his mate saying um you guys made the right decision because that that what we were seeing earlier has just gone nuts The sun hasn't come up yet. Um, the boys have been at it all night. Hey, what is it? And I think Alex is just gonna drive the boat because this little man's awake. I was hoping he'd sleep in. So Alex is gonna drive the boat and then I'll take over. outrun that rain because it came behind us Elena it's given us a push and so we've been able to go further downwind directly on course we're getting 12 knots of BMG at the moment <coughs> yeah I know it's amazing Ellie's room has turned into the playroom on this sail Lenny's already broken the roof how did you do that I was trying to help dad out but dad couldn't make it so I had to help. You were trying to help Dad and you broke the roof. Yes. <laughs> Riley's just woken up from a big nap and his breast stinks. 
But I love you. You had a big night last night with Alex. How was it? It was hard. Um, we decided to do two hours on, two hours off, and I hate it so much, but I've also grown to love it. You don't get to go sailing without getting that feeling. Headache in the back of your head from too much coffee and not enough sleep at 2 a.m., setting the alarm for every 15 minutes and like just falling asleep, being in this weird haze. I associate that with sailing now, mm. um, so I kind of love it. The kids are behaving themselves. They're actually playing in Ellie's room. She's built a fort in her cabin. She did that this morning as well. Yeah, the fort has come in handy. <laughs> Your eyes are so red. You know what my mate Paulie would say? What? If we're hungover, he'd wake up and go, oh, God. Got the breath of a thousand assholes. <laughs> <laughs> dead downwind. Sea stays very calm, but this thing's pretty massive, but we're moving quite fast relative to its position. So, sun's out. We've got two well-rested good sailors on deck. And we're just trying to keep going further and further and further away from the heart of the storm. But yeah, that's 24 knots. So the next thing we'll do is put the head sail all the way. And then if we need to, we'll turn around and probably just drop the whole main go dead downwind again with the um, head sail until, until it flew right over the top of us. Very nice to have the option to come inside and just stay nice and warm. So I've got the, the full main up. So basically I decided to just save us some time by not taking a reef. So we're dead downwind. The autopilot is just really handling it and I'm here ready to pounce if something happens. I don't care about getting wet. It just It's just the floor gets wet and then we've got to clean it up. That's my thinking about coming inside is I, is I don't want the kids to slip on the floor afterwards not a safety thing at all. Lenny, can you pass me one of them? Thanks, mate. I'm gonna sweep. Oh, you're gonna sweep with that? Do you want this, Lenny? This one's better. Okay. Got my four-year-old son swabbing the deck. <laughs> when, we're, when we're at the house, Ellie said Ellie was gonna go for a run. Yeah. And Lenny ran out and goes, oh. He didn't want her to go. Oh, and yeah. he was going, I want to blow you a kiss. Yeah. Like he does, that's what he does to us. Yeah, and he gets when upset. I see, yeah, he loves her. Yeah, Lenny loves Ellie and Alex too now. We just had the best crew on board. And this trip couldn't have got off to a better start. It's been so much fun already. Yeah, I kind of don't want this trip to end actually. It's kind of sad that this is going to be our last sail together as a family on this boat. But we have some really fun things that we're planning and we need your help for. So we are going up to Svalbard. We've already hinted at that previously when we got out our cold weather gear from storage. We are going to sail a tall ship up in Svalbard in the Arctic Circle. We're so excited for that. I'm losing my shit about that. I've had that plan in the back of my mind for three years, but honestly, you got like looking after a boat full time. It's it's just there's it's relentless. Anyway, we found ourselves with a bit of time now, so I'm really looking forward to going and doing that. Yeah, we have a couple of months from moving from this boat to the new boat, and we've decided to go on an adventure. We'd love to hear what you guys think we should do, apart from the Arctic Circle. Were you I, what would you do? It needs to be water orientated. Yeah, I, I water orientated, but can be anywhere. So we're going to make four videos from the Arctic Circle on an old traditional wooden ship. I've been wearing my new puffer jacket. <laughs> he's so excited, he's wearing his beanie. I'm like, it is hot. <laughs> Purposely cranking the aircon so I can wear my wet weather gear. See you guys soon. All right, yeah. Wish us luck on the rest of the sail. Thank you. 